Today is day 12 of our 31 day challenge where we study together the book of Proverbs. So I invite you, if you would, to turn with me, please, to Proverbs 12. I've entitled this chapter, Wisdom Below the Surface. This chapter wants us to peel back our facade and see the roots of your life. Notice in verse number three, the Bible says that the root of the righteous shall not be moved. This describes stability that exists because of righteous roots. This type of root system exists when there is a deep and abiding relationship with Christ. And that rewarding relationship with Christ comes when you have a deep and sincere love for the wisdom of the word of God. It's in verse number 12 there where there's another root reference. It mentions a root of productivity. Verse number 12 says that the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. That's productivity. And I like how the previous chapter, Proverbs 11, mentions that the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. The fruit of a Christian is another Christian. Christians are to be evangelistic. We are to be involved in the ministry of reconciliation, to put it in a New Testament way. This is in part what it means to be a productive Christian. Evangelistic fruit is distinct from the fruit of the Spirit, as is described famously in Galatians 5. But certainly, when someone is born again, it is completely the work of the Holy Spirit, and we praise Him for that. As I said in verses 3 and verse 12, it mentions righteous roots, and those verses are teaching us that righteous roots bring, again, stability and productivity. However, contrastingly, a life of wickedness lacks stability, and it produces evil fruit. Secondly, as we continue to go below the surface and push past the superficial facades, verse number five mentions the word thoughts. It says that the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. Not everyone who is offering you counsel is telling you the truth. The counsel of our wicked world is certainly rooted in deceit. And the word deceit is mentioned three times here in this chapter. And as you read through Proverbs 12, you might circle each of those three occurrences. When someone is trying to deceive you, they're trying to manipulate your thoughts. The thoughts of the righteous are right. And of course, to the extent that they're thinking righteous thoughts. Philippians 4.8 tells us, what we should be thinking on. And 2 Corinthians 10.5 instructs us of the importance of flexing your mental muscle and controlling what you think about. Thirdly, as we continue to go below the surface, consider the heart. In specific, the word heart is mentioned four times in this chapter, but it's indirectly implied numerous times throughout the chapter. And if you're in the habit of marking in your Bible, you might find each one of those four occurrences and circle them as well. Again, Proverbs 12 is pushing past our facades and it is probing about what's going on below the surface. Verse number one of Proverbs 12 uses the word love. Verse 15 is another one of those verses that is indirectly mentioning our heart. I mean, verse 1 has the idea of love, and love, when it exists, it flows from our heart. And we should have a heart's affection for heavenly instruction. How a person responds to reproof determines whether or not they're on the wise road or the fool's path. Sometimes when we have been rebuked or chastened, we put on that facade as if we're handling the rebuke well. But the real question is, what's going on in your heart in those times? Do you have, as verse 1 says, a brutish heart and hate the reproof? Or do you love heavenly instruction? If you struggle in that area in your heart, I encourage you to go back several chapters to Proverbs chapter 3 and read 11 through 15. Those verses have the power to strengthen you in that area. Proverbs 12 goes below the surface and it considers our roots and our thoughts and our heart. This is what the Lord taught me from Proverbs 12. If you would, comment below and let me know what the Lord has taught you. And be sure to check out tomorrow's Strength for Life video where we'll explain Proverbs 13 as we continue together studying the book of Proverbs for this 31-day challenge where we are together enriched by this book of wisdom, again, the book of Proverbs.